We're back with another Answers in First Enoch, episode 33. And no, we're not Freemasons because we use the number and don't skip it. We're not going to let their profanity take a number out of the number system. That's ridiculous. This is a continuation of the previous video on the seven weeks, not ten again, uh, of Enoch's prophecies dating the earth in full time to just over 7,000 years years. Yep, he does. And now it's time to bring this home. And then we will address chapter 91. That's two chapters earlier, which renders a different time period for those weeks. Or in Hebrew, the word is Sabbaths, which has multiple interpretations in terms of time. So no surprise, we need to ask when we see the word, which Sabbath are they referring? What is Enoch using it for there? the weekly one in that case, uh, or is it the annual one every seven years, or the seventh millennia, which is it? We'll prove that out here in this video. Let's jump back in. We left off with the fifth week, uh, here it is again, which gets us to 5,000 uh, basically years uh, from creation. Uh, according to the whole of scripture and we've made it to basically the shift to where the BC shifts to AD in era. Uh, so what happens next here? Let's see. We're still in 1st Enoch chapter 93 picking up in verse 8 and after that in the sixth week, that's 6,000 years basically, all who live in it shall be blinded wow now what is he talking about well folks that the it there the the subject involved is the temple because that's what he was just talking about that's the it carried over from the previous verse now who lived in it well in the end the pharisees do hmm how about that? And they profane and defile the temple. Watch who defiled the temple. We prove that out. And the temple priests, they identify them in history very clearly. Uh, and they don't have good things to say about them. And nor does Messiah for good reason. That's why he did not launch his ministry at the temple. And that's kind of weird that he wouldn't do that. If you think about its significance, And that's because the temple was defiled at that time. Therefore, he launched it where the temple priest had been exiled to, which is known as Bethabara in the Bible, which is the same location as what they call Qumran, the Muslim name continued in fraud today. Now, let's keep reading. And the hearts of all of them shall godlessly forsake wisdom. Isn't that exactly what Messiah said of the Pharisees and Phariseeism? Uh, because that's what we're talking about here. That's what ruled the day uh, at the, at, in this period. Uh, that was the forced religion of what remained of Israel, which is just the southern kingdom, Judea at that point. Uh, basically, Judah, Benjamin, and part of the Levites. But now this gets specific, so th there's no questioning what happens here. Uh, and in it, a man shall ascend. What? What man? Well, that can only be Messiah, even in his own words, because he said no man ascended prior to him. Ha! Done. He meant to reside, by the way. We cover Enoch, uh, nor Elijah res reside in heaven. Yes, they went there. They visited, but they don't live there. Uh, to this day, they both are still in the Garden of Eden, and they're both still alive. Watch those videos. Where did he not go and... Where are Enoch and Elijah now? Uh, try to debate that point on this video without reviewing those. Be muted. Our channel, our rules. And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire. Wow. Now, the house of dominion we covered before is what? The temple. The temple was destroyed in this era by fire. Boom. Done. Enoch saw that. And the whole race of the chosen root, that would be Israel, shall be dispersed. Yes, the northern kingdom had already been dispersed and remained dispersed at that time. Because all were taken, 
none returned. Watch our Lost Tribes series. The Bible well defines that. But now, the southern kingdom, who had returned from Babylon to Judea, uh, from their captivity, they would now be dispersed as well, indeed. And that happened, and that's the era that we're in here. So in the first 1,000 years A.D., after the shift in time, although, I mean, you know, even if you just want to look at an Anamundi, either way, it doesn't matter, uh, same thing, uh, we see that Yahushua was killed. He resurrected, and he ascended to heaven, just as Enoch predicted he would. See, Enoch knew that. Scripture has always known that. That was not some mystery to the disciples even and the people of that age. It may well have been a mystery to the Pharisees because they weren't reading Enoch and Jubilees by their own admission in their own words. Just read Josephus and what he calls canon, which is the Pharisee canon, not the canon of the temple priests. Because that's been found in Qumran and we know what it is and it included Enoch and it included Jubilees and several other books. The temple was burnt down again for a final time really uh, about 70 AD. Uh, the third temple will not be Yahuwah's understand that so it is impertinent. Uh, it is impertinent to scripture other than uh, it will be for the beast to declare he is God there. Uh, it will not be Yahuwah's he doesn't need it. And he never orders it. It's not his command. The final remnants of Israel were dispersed from the land. That's all there. Enoch saw all of this before the flood. And here we are in the first 1,000 years A.D. Right there. Verse 9. And after that, in the seventh week. That's the last week of this passage. That's it. It ends there. That's the last one. And it doesn't go into an 8th and ninth and 10th week per se, other than it does go into the 8th just a little, just into the very beginning. But does not complete an 8th, ninth, or 10th week, period. And again, we're going to go back to 91, chapter 91, and we're going to vet out what that's saying. It is not referring to another 1,000, 1,000, and 1,000, 3,000 more years nonsense. So what happens now? Shall an apostate generation arise? Now, many really overlook this entire era, this entire thousand years, which is the most corrupt in mankind's history, other than, of course, it just gets worse from there. But this was the apostate generation rising. You could especially call that, well, the Catholic Church and the Pharisees, who together make up the final eagle head of Ezra's final empire. We cover that in Answers in 2nd Estrus. Check it out because we really detail that and because Ezra does and we follow what he says. And it's very clear. Many shall be its deeds. Indeed. And all its deeds shall be apostate. Understand that all the deeds of the Catholic Church is are apostate. Period. The whole foundation of the whole organization is apostate. The whole foundation of what they call rabbinic Judaism, which is just a continuation of Phariseeism, is apostate. Period. Enoch knew that before the flood. Why don't we know that today? Why is the church supporting these two as even possibly being anything other than what Yahusha identified them. The synagogue of Satan who say they are Yahudim and are not, but do lie. Revelation 2.9 and 3.9. The Catholic Church attacked the Sabbath. The Pharisees profane every Sabbath of every year, period. They are wrong every week. We cover that in our Sabbath series. They began to conquer the world, really, both factions, and they even mingled together. Not just the Crusades, but colonialism. Uh, come on, that had the Pope's endorsement, folks. That wasn't some, oh, it was the Spanish, oh, it was the British, oh, it was the, uh, you know, whoever. <laughs> yeah, uh, it, come on. It's the same Prince Demon, Gog of Magog. He is the master of all of those. <laughs> and they're all pretty much in his area. So there. 
Watch those videos, by the way, Gog of Magog, Psalm 83, War, in our Lost Tribe series, uh, and they'll blow your mind if you haven't. Uh, it was basically for the Pope that these things were done. And the Jews, who were the pirates carrying out much of that, uh, yes, they were still involved in the Inquisition, and they are the Jesuits. That is a Jewish order within the Catholic Church. They are the bankers funding it. Most of all evil. I mean, there it is. To this very day. And again, if you look at the 1666 cult, uh, of Shabbatai Sevi, uh, where millions of Jews participated and followed. Again, not all, and the average Jew not involved in any of that. Uh, but they actually set forth to bring about the conditions for basically the book of Revelation. Uh, that's what they wanted. So they're, they're willing to even profane uh, to the, the worst degree. I mean, you want to talk about a satanic doctrine that is definitely one. And that's the basis of those who are running the banking system today and other uh, industry, etc., and politics largely in many countries, especially Europe and America. So, basically, these were the continuation of the synagogue of Satan. They profane everything they touch. And that's what Enoch just said. All right? That's not just us. And they do it in every way possible, including modern scholarship, which is pathetically inept on such matters. That's why they do things like ignore, basically, inspired scripture like Jubilees and Enoch. No wonder they don't want this book to be read. Yes, its deed, their deeds, are very many. There's no doubt. They're, it's an overwhelming amount and number of people. Uh, again, you know, look at the number involved in the Jesuit order, in the Catholic Church, in uh, Judaism, and in banking, industry, finance, all of these different areas, politics that they have infiltrated at this point, which is what the Synagogue of Satan has always done and how it has always operated. Basically, they try to bring everything to ruin. They are apostate in all that they do, just as the Nephilim were. In doctrine, they are the same, some of them even in bloodlines, at least they attempt to preserve them. Verse 10, and at its close shall be elected the elect righteous. Now, that's the remnant ecclesia, but also all believers of all ages, in essence, uh, which is about to happen. But we're not quite there yet, but we're, we're close. This is basically identifying that this is the close of this era basically is going to be very close to the close of mankind uh, as far as this entire era or age uh, before the earth will be renewed. Of the eternal plant of righteousness. Now that's Yahusha. So the elect of Yahusha, uh, his believers, his remnant ecclesia. Uh, there you go. So no one else, by the way, could ever fit the eternal plant of righteousness. No one. There's not a single man uh, otherwise, period. To receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. See, all his creation, all ages, all believers from all time. Now, where are we now? Let's take a look. We are essentially and roughly, these aren't exact nor intended to be, but in the era of 1000 AD to 2000 AD, roughly. That is very recent, folks. It brings us to pretty close to where we are now, but it's in the past now. So what does that mean? Well, as we mentioned last video, if you watch Answers in Second Esdras, parts 9 through 11, we lay out Ezra's vision of 7,000 years, roughly as well as Daniel's 2300 days, which brings us to the Day of Judgment somewhere around 100 years from now. We're not date setting, and we don't have an exact as no man knows the day or hour, but we can do the math and know the season, according to Yahusha, that's what he said, and we cover those scriptures over there as well. Watch it if you have not. Uh, so now what? Well, we are beyond the 2000 uh, P 
period, and we're still here, right? I mean, we're not gone yet. Messiah hasn't returned yet, right? Exactly. Actually, Enoch is not done yet, as he identifies that it will be in the beginning of the eighth week, essentially. He doesn't call it the eighth week, but that's what he's referring to uh, in these terms as far as the thousand years. So we, we do enter the next thousand years. Uh, the eighth week, it, it does start, but early in will be the day of judgment, and that's coming very soon. Again, we believe the math comes out to about a century from now. Try to debate that without watching those videos. Well, be muted, our channel, our rules. Essentially, we are now be, be, beyond, basically, the clock, the 7,000 years. It stopped already in one sense, and we are awaiting the final tribulation, uh, the final day of judgment, uh, and for you know all of the wicked to be consumed, and for the new age to come. The final legal head, according to Ezra, is rising right now, and many are sensing this presence of evil, which is why uh, many get the sense that we're already in the tribulation. No, we're not, because many things haven't happened that have to in order for that to be the case. Scripture is too clear to confuse that. That empire is evil to the core, by the way, and it does not need to wait for the beast to be very evil. It's going to operate in extreme evil from its inception. It has already, and it will continue to get worse. So we must put on our full armor, folks, and prepare. But let's keep reading here. Let's go back a verse to keep it in context. Uh, verse 10 again. And at its close, so at the close of this final, uh, you know, seventh day, uh, will be shall be elected the elect righteous. So the remnant ecclesia, believers, uh, of the eternal plant of righteousness, Messiah, to receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. Verse 11. For who is there of all the children of men that is able to hear the voice of the Holy One without being troubled? Hmm. You know, even Moses was. Only Yahusha. He's the only that fits that. And who can think his thoughts? Wow. Only Yahusha. And who is there that can behold all the works of heaven? Only Yahusha. That's it. This is awesome. Verse 12. And how should there be one who could behold the heaven? And who is there that could understand the things of heaven? And see a soul or a spirit and could tell thereof or ascend? Well, only Yahushua has done that. And see all their ends and think them or do like them. Only Yahushua. This is the second coming. And it follows the 7,000 years into the 8th day, or 8th, uh, sorry, 8th week. Verse 13, And who is there of all men that could know what is the breadth and the length of the earth? Well, only Yahushua, even Nasa, doesn't even know that. And to whom has been shown the measure of all of them? Only Yahushua. Or is there anyone who could discern the length of the heaven and how great is its height and upon what it is founded and how great is the number of the stars and where all the luminaries rest? Folks, this is only Yahusha. The seventh week, 7,000 years, represents a close, the last 1,000 years, before judgment. Those complete. And then we go into the eighth, which begins and has begun. We know this. And again, we believe we prove that in about one century from now, approximately. Again, it's approximate. We don't know the day or the hour, but we can know the season. Uh, we'll see the second coming, the day of judgment. Many of us will not be here for that, probably all watching um, but, uh, however, we must prepare 
now. We must get our children ready in the next generation. This will continue on. Evil will ramp up, but this will be the most exciting time for believers as well. Now we'll go back to chapter 91. That's two chapters before what we just read in chapter 93, right? Now, there we find a reference from Enoch to weeks 8, 9, and 10. And though that seems to progress from 7, we get it, there is a major problem here. Well, they're just not reading. That's the problem. All three of these are defined in description as the Day of Judgment era, period. They cannot be weeks of thousands of years. They cannot be the same measure that we just read in 93. Impossible. If they are, there would be three judgments, for instance, which is ridiculous. There is only one. Uh, it doesn't happen. I know some read Revelation 20, where John advances a thousand years to tell us that uh, basically, Satan's end will be, you know, after a thousand years, he'll be uh, released and then he'll be judged and there'll be no more Satan, right? But it then returns back to the era that basically is the day of judgment. And John makes that really clear because he's talking about things that are day of judgment things. And he's not a thousand years later anymore. So that's very clear in that passage if you really read it. These are a different measure, though, and this will be obvious as it is a different use of the word Sabbath or Shabbat in Hebrew, which is the word week in English. And what's actually very telling here is this is about three weeks, literally three weeks, and we're talking about the time of the prophetic shadow of things to come, right, in the fall feast, which is about a Three week period 22 days but same thing nevertheless so hmm this is interesting let's check it out verse 12 in chapter 91 and after that there shall be another now bear in mind he just got done talking about the day of judgment and 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 the day of judgment in the previous 11 verses. <laughs> I mean, pretty clearly, that's what we're talking about here in context. And this is just going to continue that same vein. Check this out. So, there shall be another. The eighth week. Now, again, this is 91. And what we just read is two chapters later, right? So, this isn't a continuation of chapter 93. That's impossible. Uh, that would be incredibly backwards. Uh, so, check this out. So, the eighth week, that of righteousness. Now, that certainly could sound like the thousand years, you know, the thousand year reign, they call it, uh, though Yahusha reigns forever, not just a thousand years. But this is the thousand years while Satan is bound, but that's not the case here, because it can't be, and we'll see. Uh, this is going to define what happens during that eighth week, and it literally is going to be a seven day week, uh, not, uh, certainly not a thousand years. And a sword shall be given to it that a righteous judgment may be executed on the oppressors. So who are the oppressors? The, the kings, the leaders will be judged, essentially. Uh, and that would include pastors, by the way. Um, so, and sinners shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous. Now, that doesn't happen over a thousand years, folks. It doesn't happen. That, that, that wouldn't fit any prophetic timeline whatsoever. So when does this happen? That happens on the day of final judgment, period. Which, again, doesn't have to be a 24-hour day, but a period. Uh, but they call it the day of judgment. Uh, verse 13. And at its close, they shall acquire houses through their righteousness. Now, that's interesting. What did Messiah say? In my father's house, there are many mansions, right? Hmm. Referring to New Jerusalem. Uh, for the righteous, what is this? Uh, and a house shall be built for the great king in glory forevermore. What is that? That is definitely, definitively New Jerusalem. And what happens to New Jerusalem? We know in Revelation, it comes down from heaven. When? 
on the day of final judgment. Not after a thousand years. That doesn't work. It doesn't fit anything. And certainly is not what the Bible talks about. This is a reference to the day of judgment, not a thousand years. And this is not the same time frame as chapter 93 in terms of this word week or Sabbath. This Sabbath is more of the weekly Sabbath, seven days. Now, really this is going to break down into three judgments, three events here in this chapter. And this is fascinating because it matches, really, the three prophetic fall feasts that really defined the day of judgment, the time of judgment. Uh, but they all happen on the same day in terms of that time, uh, really that feast season. Uh, and it cannot be 3,000 more years. just doesn't work. You can't add that. You don't go back to chapter 93, you know, forward and say, oh, well, let's add 8, 9, and 10 now. Yes, R.H. Charles did that. And R.H. Charles was a fool for doing so. That is not a way that you can possibly read this. This better matches the future prophetic foreshadowing of the three fall feasts. This one would be, essentially, the Feast of Trumpets, most likely. So this eighth week, as it is interpreted, is not the same measure of these other seven weeks of 1,000-year periods, but takes place really after the seven weeks are complete, so really in the eighth week, and it would be the time of the end. But the, the eighth week doesn't continue in terms of uh, the Day of Judgment, but before judgment happens and the earth is remade uh, it just doesn't work but let's keep going and this will this will vet out and by the way I want to be clear we're not saying that Enoch kept uh, tabernacles uh, atonement and the feast of trumpets necessarily uh, we're not saying that at all that's not the point here and he doesn't call them by the names of what would become the feasts but it does tie in terms of uh, the three feasts that foreshadow uh, this age of the Day of Judgment. Uh, it, it works perfect, and it's a three-week period, and it all just ties uh, as it should. Verse 14, and after that, in the ninth week. Again, we're not adding to the seven in terms of another thousand years. It's not 9,000 years now. It doesn't work. The righteous judgment... We're in judgment again. That's the day of judgment again. Shall be revealed to the whole world. Okay, so a little different from the previous. Uh, when does that happen? Well, that also happens on the day of judgment. In that period, in that time frame. Whether it's a 24-hour day or not, and it's not. Uh, this is more akin to the day of atonement here. Uh, all will be judged. And then check this part out. And all the works of the godless shall vanish from all the earth. The earth is atoned from sin. Hmm, indeed. And the world shall be written down for destruction. Or really, uh, it will be replenished. And that's what actually happens. Because there is then a new heaven and a new earth. Uh, as Peter, Isaiah both tell us, as well as Jubilees. And all mankind, and Enoch for that matter... And all mankind shall look to the path of uprightness. Well, that is firmly atonement. So this really seems more a mirror to the fall feasts as far as these three weeks in chapter 91. Uh, and they are a three-week period, essentially. So uh, what it does not mirror in any sense are the seven weeks uh, that we just saw in chapter 91. 93, which are very clearly very large periods of times, so no matter how you look at it, there's no way it's just three literal weeks. Um, it just can't work. It doesn't work at all. But it certainly is in a thousand year periods, and this is not a continuation of chapter 93. And I mean, do you and I write that way? Do you write a paragraph and, uh, and then, you know, two chapters later, uh, write a whole chapter and then come back and say, oh, well, you know, that. That paragraph from two chapters earlier was a continuation of the other. Well, everybody would just say, well, then you put it in the wrong place, right? I mean, it doesn't work. It's not logical. 
So again, this ninth week falls in the early part of the eighth week of the of what chapter 93 would assess as thousand year periods. Uh, this too is the day of judgment period. I mean, that's what it is. There's judging going on here. There's judgment going on in the eighth week. And let's see on the 10th week. Now, this one really gives it all away. Again, remember, this is Enoch writing before the flood. Uh, and this one really akin to the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, we know Tabernacles to be an eighth-day period. However, before the days of Jacob, Jacob, uh, before he extended it one more day to eight days, it was seven days. Remember that. And it is possible that Enoch knew this one and kept it, whether he kept the feast as, as we know it or not, we don't know. But it is possible this one uh, he, he did keep because he seems to know a little more detail here. Uh, here we go, verse 15. And after this, in the 10th week, now get this, in the seventh part. Okay, so basically the end of the 10th week of the seventh part. These are broken into seven parts, seven days. That's what this is. I mean, this is really referring to a literal week. Um, and that event, Tabernacles, is a literal week. It's Again, it's eight days today, but it was seven days before, even in the days of Abraham, it was seven days. Uh, it's a true week, basically, but may well match, again, the three fall feasts that occur over a period of just beyond three weeks. This is, I mean, this is what we see as an interpretation that makes sense. Uh, can we say 100%? We don't, we don't know that we can, but it, it certainly seems logical. But imagine that. This would be akin to tabernacles where we receive our new heavenly bodies. But here we have another judgment. And this one especially, we know its timing of 70 generations, or 7,000 years, roughly. Here we go. There shall be the great eternal judgment. That is the day of judgment again. That's the period. In All three are. All three of these weeks fall into the day of judgment. That's a period, basically in the fall feasts, um, in which he will execute vengeance amongst the angels. Ha! So this is when the watchers and also the others who fall, especially the one-third in the uh, Revelation 12 war in heaven, uh, which we are going to cover, by the way, more in this series as well. A video coming on that. Don't worry. But verse 16, And the first heaven shall depart and pass away, uh, just as Peter said, and a new heaven shall appear, just as Peter said. You know, we know when this occurs, it is the day of judgment period. That's what it is. Um, there is no new period here in terms of another thousand years. It couldn't possibly fit. This is really just three literal weeks here, folks, and it's three different judgments, yet it's really not. These are the same. Uh, and they're in the fall feast period. Uh, prophetically, we know those three feasts are a prophecy of that particular age. Uh, basically, they occur from the 1st to the 22nd of this 7th Hebrew month. That's the way it works. So it is literally about 21 days, 22 to be exact, um, but actually it's not. It's 21 and a half, so it doesn't quite work either. <laughs> but nevertheless, it is about three weeks. Uh, it doesn't get much clearer than that. And all the powers of the heavens shall give sevenfold light. Whoa! Did you just read that? Remember what Revelation says? The sun and moon lose their light, basically. Uh, they disappear of sort. Well, there's no mention of a new sun or a new moon being created. So, uh, why? Well, perhaps Enoch just told us why. The heavenly luminary angels will be increased in radiance and light by seven times as powerful. Wow! I mean, this is the kind of stuff that you get from Enoch. That you just, I mean, you just, wow is all you can really say. So basically, there's a week of judgment and a week of judgment and a week of judgment, which all equate to uh, the time of the day of judgment period, uh, again, which falls in the feast, the fall feast cycle. 
prophetically in time, uh, the world won't see another 3,000 you know, years beyond uh, before it is renewed. That's not... It, not a fit to any scripture anywhere, uh, nor Enoch, and that's for certain. Judgment's coming soon, folks. Uh, we've entered the eighth week. Again, in about a century, we prove out, uh, but regardless, uh, and prove all things for yourself, of course. And uh, we're just giving ballparks there. We're just doing the math. But one thing we know for sure, we must all get ready now. These three weeks... The fall feast, it appears, uh, will take place as the 8th, 9th, and 10th week, early in the 8th week of 1,000 years. So it's the 8th, 9th, and 10th Sabbath, 7th day, you know, Sabbath week, basically, um, as opposed to the 8th week of 1,000 years of millennia. Um, that would be the difference. There's just no way to make those work as thousand year periods and yet Enoch's chapter 93 is very clearly thousand year periods because he gives you the uh the identifiers in each thousand years and it just I mean it's so easy to see again Daniel really nails this down in time as well watch those videos parts 9 through 11 of answers in second Esther's. what we know for sure though is this is not a continuation of the same math of a thousand years. That doesn't work. Um, so uh, we know that a thousand years equals a day in Yahuwah's time. Uh, and that works out in chapter 93. But it does not in chapter 91 here in any sense. These are three judgments which really are all one in the same day of judgment. Verse 17, and after that, there will be many weeks without number forever. Wow. And all shall be in goodness and righteousness, and sin shall be no more, or shall no more be mentioned forever, are his words here. This is an exact match to all of prophecy regarding the time after the day of judgment. This will be forever, weeks without number. We will live eternally without sin and in the presence of Yahuwah and Yahusha. Wow. Yes, Enoch knew the salvation message, the true one, which is relationship. And he was and is saved. Your pastor, well, may not be, because he may not know the definition of salvation. It requires relationship with Yahusha, uh, and that's right there in Scripture uh, from the words of Messiah. Uh, that relationship must progress as we bear much good fruit. Yes, we have to do something. Yes, it is a free gift, but we still have to do something. There are many pastors out there who do not understand this concept and teach that salvation is simply saying a prayer and that's it. That's satanic doctrine. Uh, do what thou wilt. Uh, and it is a lie and it's rooted in in the modern church. You can start with a prayer, yes, but only relationship with Yahushua must continue from there. Uh, gains one entry into the kingdom of heaven. I mean, just read Matthew 7 and John 15 in the words of Messiah who defined salvation. Watch our video, Grafted into the Kingdom, and we lay that out in great detail from Scripture. Dude, this is incredible. Enoch is so spot on with prophecy written before the flood. He just laid out the time of the earth and man, which are the same, save six days, uh, of course, that is, uh, yes, literal days. The Sabbath day was always 24 hours. We, we do know that, right? So creation's time clock, when it says day and first day, and then it defines the day as day, evening, and morning. Yes, that's what it actually defines. Go back and read it. Read the first day again. It's those three time periods in the day that make up the day. Yes, day was first. From creation to the day of judgment is about 7,000 years. It goes a little beyond that but it's 7,000 plus years. Um, and we are very close, my friends, very 
close again. We run the math in parts 9 through 11 of Answers in 2nd Ezra's. We're not date setting, but Yahushua said we would know the season. Believers will, and we believe we all can. This is not and never was 10 days in Enoch, as several scholars and even Tom Horn picked up on. But so does R.H. Charles. So in all fairness to Tom, that is, uh, it's in scholarship, it's rooted there, and it's been nonsense all along. Uh, it's a misreading of Enoch, which they also did with the 70 generations, uh, where he tried to say that the Watchers returned in the early part of the 20th century with World War I, World War II, uh, 1947, you know, uh, uh, supposed, you know, Roswell crash, uh, with the aliens and all that kind of stuff. I get where he's going, and frankly, we actually love his book, and uh, the concept uh, still literally is a very good one, and it's a good read and something that everybody should read. But uh, his interpretation of Enoch is, is outright uh, flawed. Uh, so basically, we're talking about 7,000 years plus a little, uh, Daniel agrees, Ezra agrees, and this fits the whole of Scripture. There are not millions of years of the earth, which is illiterate science, and some try to apply it in things like the gap theory to add time to placate really modern scientism, which is a religion of religious zealots uh, who love their occult religion. Many of them call themselves atheists, so they say they're not religious. You know, they're more, much more religious than you and I are, really. Uh, they don't even realize they do have a God. They declare themselves as gods, and they fail that test miser miserably. Uh, Yahuwah is still on the throne. The day of judgment is still coming, and he has preserved his timeline for all of us to understand. There it is. May we all absorb this and truly understand it and live our lives in service of his ways over man's ways, including the church's many doctrines of men. We have over 400 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year now, many just as profound, with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos, now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often and we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon, and our new podcast uh, available for most of our videos as well. Uh, all links in the description box. Friend us on Facebook at The God Culture, space hyphen space original. If you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor link below. We now have six books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries. With a new release, the first book of Enoch, the oldest book in history, and we prove that it is right there in the introduction. Download it for free and read it. It most certainly is the oldest book ever written by the hands of man. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon. And it is available in hardcover or softcover over there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interior, as so many had requested on Amazon. Uh, and we already have that in the Philippines with color maps. But uh, now that's available on Amazon in hardcover, color, softcover, color, or uh, black and white still as well. The first book of Enoch is also available on those three platforms on uh, Amazon overseas, but in the Philippines it is black and white. That's all we can do here for now. All books, including Solomon's Treasure, are now free in ebook. Just go to ophirinstitute.com for all the links for your area for all of our books. More coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember. Prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.